What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, well, we wanted to wrap up our second day at Yellowstone. Um, we're not currently in Yellowstone, we're coming to you from Grovant Campground uh, over in the Grand Tetons. We'll be coming out with a video, obviously, on this uh, here shortly. But um, wanted to wrap up our second day at Yellowstone. Um, if you haven't seen our first day, make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link above uh, that'll take you to that video. We really want to check out Lamar Valley. So uh, we got up early again. Uh, it's a little further to drive to get to the northeast entrance. So it took us close to two hours to get to the northeast entrance from where we were down down by Cody. Um, but we wanted to get there early. Really wanted to check out Lamar Valley and see what that was all about. So on the drive there, beautiful drive uh, from Cody up to the northeast entrance up there, um, going up the uh, Beartooth Highway. Uh, as we're coming around the bend there, just at daylight. Got to see a couple beautiful elk come across the road. Um, thought that was going to be a pretty good sign for what the day would bring. Um, so as we approach the park a little more you know you're driving out through the middle of nowhere and uh, then all of a sudden you come to a little town it's called Cook City and you're literally in the middle of nowhere middle of nowhere and then boom you drive into this little tiny town and uh, it was packed out with people really surprising to see such a tiny little town just kind of plopped out in the middle of nowhere like that um, had a beautiful little fox run across the road right before we got to the entrance um, so we were seeing some wildlife early so we really were excited to see what the day would bring um, as we got into the east end the northeast entrance up there uh, it was an unmanned entrance so didn't have to show anything or pay anything there and uh, they just wanted you to pay on your way out so Went through there. Uh, first thing we saw, real big bison around the side of the road. Yeah, it's all wet. If I could walk his way on down, seeing the ones he went down the grass, if I could go on the, across the valley. As we come down through, head toward Lamar Valley, uh, we actually uh, got stuck in our first bison jam. So, Dylan was pretty excited about that. Did you like the bison jam? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, look! <laughs> the babies! Oh my! But I can just stay here all day and watch these these guys. <laughs> what are these guys doing? Look! I don't want them all. Oh, I see them. Oh no! Hey! What? He moved. Ah! Look at that little one. Look right in front of her. Oh wow! No bison fight right out the window. Oh, I got a couple more up here. There's two are going at it. What? Wow. Oh yeah, uh, you're probably right because I just saw pushing that guy into the way. Yeah, this bit, he's an older baby, but he's still, he's still like probably just a few months old. Oh, the dude across him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, look, this guy's running across the way. He's like, wait for me. Oh, look, look at this guy coming. Whoa! Bam! Across the way he goes. <laughs> he didn't want to get stuck in a bison jam for a while. We thought we were going to get stuck in one in Custer, but uh, they always stayed off the road. But um, yeah, not this time. They were all in the way, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. They didn't want to be. They were just standing there, pretty much. So Lamar Valley is known for bison. Uh, it's known for bears and it's known for wolves. Uh, we didn't see any bears and wolves. Uh, really, bison, though, yeah, tons okay. of bison, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bison. I mean, they were they were everywhere. Um, <clears throat> There's four thousand bison in Yellowstone. Four thousand bison in Yellowstone, is that right? Yeah. He knows his bison facts. So, it's known for bears and wolves. Um, I would suggest if you're going there to look for those, you really need a spotting scope. You'll see a lot of people have spotting scopes uh, or a really good pair of binoculars because the, it's so massive out there um it just goes for such a long way that that whole valley that uh 
the chances of seeing something up close are probably slim. You're probably going to be viewing it from a real far distance, and uh, obviously the best way to do that is with a good pair of binoculars or, or even a spotting scope, something like that. Yeah. There's a lot of people that sit there and, and wait for the wildlife to come out so they can see them. Um, we checked out some overlooks. So our original plan was to go in, work all the way up to Mammoth Hot Springs, and then turn around and come back out. Once we got up to Mammoth Hot Springs, we couldn't really get out and walk up actually to it, uh, to the hot springs because we brought our dog Nick's with us. Um, they don't allow dogs up on the boardwalks or any of the hiking trails or anything. Um, but uh, there was an overlook you could pull off after you went past hot springs. You could kind of pull up off on this overlook and uh, get out and kind of get a, a bird's eye view of the, of the springs up there. Uh, so that's what we did. Super impressive looking place. A um, little, little disappointed we didn't uh, didn't walk up there, but we knew we were going to have a really full day. Didn't want to leave the dog. Uh, didn't want to leave Nick's home all alone, you know, for a, a real long day in the trailer by herself. So uh, we decided to to bring her with us. So once we got to Mammoth Hot Springs, um, we kind of made the decision instead of turning around and driving back out of the park. It's such a long drive to get into Hot Springs from that northeast entrance that. We decided that instead of turning around and going back out and, and taking that same route back, um, time-wise and mileage-wise, it would be almost the same just to continue on south through the park, um, stay on Grand Loop Road, and end up going out the east entrance, uh, which would put, put us out closer to where we were staying uh, over at Buffalo Bill State Park. So that's what we did. So on the way out, we drove down through. Um, it. Uh, we didn't stop any of the geysers or anything. That takes you kind of toward that area. Um, by the time we got there, it had already been a lot of driving. It was already gonna be a long day getting all the way through the park and getting back. And we knew the next day we were gonna be coming back to see that stuff. So um, we decided to just bypass the geysers and the geyser basin and thing like that and things like that. And uh, just keep on heading out to go out the uh, east entrance of the park. So as we got down close to where uh, we were going to make our turn off um, to go back toward Cody. Um, kind of got the highlight of the day down there, and uh, that was a big elk uh, that was just kind of grazing in the little in this little open area right off the kind of right off the side of the road. Um, beautiful, beautiful elk. Thought it might have been the same one that we saw uh, toward the end of day one, but um, that elk had a had a clipped ear, uh, the one we saw on the first day, and uh, this one did not. So it was a so it was a different elk, um, which was pretty awesome. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, just right there, close. And we didn't see a whole lot of wildlife that day, other than a whole bunch of bison. Um, hey, I'm, I'm not complaining about seeing a whole bunch of bison. We did see a little small 
a uh, small black bear, a uh, real light color, like a blonde color black bear, uh, back toward Lamar Valley, but he was he was in some really, really, really tall grass. Could just barely see his back sticking up. Um, had some technical difficulties with the camera, more user error than anything. But uh, so we didn't get any footage of him. But uh, it, it, I'm not sure how good it would have turned out anyway. You could just barely see his back sticking up from from a little distance away. But um, other than that, that's the bison, the one little small bear, and then uh, yeah. that elk. That's about the extent of our wildlife that we saw there on day two. So not as as, as exciting as day one. Uh, some beautiful. Unless you've never seen bison. There. Right. Some beautiful views, though. I mean, Lamar Valley is a beautiful area. Um, I can definitely see we're at the right time of year and at the right time, the right time of day, at the right time of year. That place would probably be flooded with wildlife. Um, it just looks like an awesome, awesome area. So, um, not as much wildlife uh, on day two. It was more, more about, uh, more about some of the just the beautiful views and, and the beautiful weather that we had there on day two. Uh, that pretty much wraps up day two. Um, Day three will be uh, all about uh, all about the geysers, all about Old Faithful and the geyser basin over that way. Um, so, looking forward to getting that out and uh, showing you guys that side of Yellowstone, um, whole different whole different side of Yellowstone compared to what we have seen to this point. So, Dylan, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. And I'll trip you out always. Bye, guys. All right. We'll catch you guys down the road. Yellowstone Day 3, coming up.